Alleluia, alleluia. This weekend we have the rare and wonderful occasion of celebrating the canonization of two fairly contemporary popes, Pope John the Twenty Third and Pope John Paul the Second. Now I call Pope John the Twenty Third a contemporary, even though he passed over fifty years ago. But he's a contemporary because in his short five years as a pope, he affected Catholic life. He affected the way we celebrate Mass here this morning, and he surely affected the way that I grew up. He was appointed Pope in 1958 after a long reign by Pope Pius XII. He was an old man at that time. He only lived five more years. He died of cancer. People expected him to be kind of a buffer, you know, an old guy who would come in after a long reign and kind of just settle everything and get ready for another reign. So that's why people were surprised within a couple of months of him being elected Pope, he announced we will convene an ecumenical council of the entire world. And the image is that he opened the windows and said, let the Spirit come in. Also let the church go out to the world and let the world come to the church and let's try to communicate with each other and listen to each other. Pope John XXIII was known as a simple, holy, profound man. I would commend his diary to you, the diary of a soul. He talks about a profound and a deep faith. He was called the good pope. He was a very funny man. Um, famously, people asked him, how many people actually work at the Vatican? And he said, well, as best as I can figure, about half of them work. <laughs> or one day when he was walking down the street, he passed by a group of women, and one of the women said, there's our pope. And the other one said, he's kind of fat and he's kind of funny looking. And John the Twenty-Third heard it, and he turned to them, and he said, well, you know, it's not a beauty contest. <laughs> People could relate with him. He was one of us. He was human. But he called this council. The Second Vatican Council changed the way we celebrate Mass. So we celebrate now in our language. This is the church that I grew up with. The Second Vatican Council went from 1962 to 65. I was born in 1966. The parish that I grew up in, my home parish in Grand Island, was formed within five years of the Second Vatican Council. So I grew up knowing a couple things. One is the Mass was in a language that I could speak, but even more so, I was invited and I was expected to be a part of the Mass. It wasn't just Father saying Mass. We had a role in it. So my parents sat us in the second row on this side so we could see what was going on and be part of it. As soon as we were able, we were altar servers. We did everything we could to participate. So I learned that. Mass is for all of us. You all have a role in the Mass. We can't just sit and watch someone else do it for us. Also, at Second Vatican Council, we clarified, because I am baptized, I have a responsibility and a gift. I'm called to holiness, and I'm called to ministry. And I think that before Second Vatican Council, we kind of thought that was the role of the priests and the sisters. They're the ones who did holiness and ministry on our behalf, and we kind of took care of the rest of the world. Well, at Second Vatican Council, we clarified. We have a gift and a responsibility, all of us, for holiness. That means that I take time to pray and communicate with the God who made me. It means that I try to take what happens here, and I bear it on every part of my life. I carry the Mass to my family. I carry the teachings of my Lord to my workplace, to my neighborhood. That's holiness. And also we are called to ministry. Some of you are called to help in the ministry of your parish. Most of you are called to ministry in the world. So again, some of you, your main ministry is to be a husband or a wife, a mother or a father, a neighbor, a co-worker. That's your ministry. So how can I take my faith and do the best that I can there? So we celebrate John the 23rd. The second pope we celebrate is John Paul II. He was elected in 1978 and served until he died in 2005. I remember I was a boy when he was elected, but I remember the first image I have of him. He was a young, robust, athletic fellow. And do you remember he went skiing within the first six months, I think, that he was elected pope. So we saw for the first time ever an image of our pope snow skiing. And we thought, wait a minute, does this fit? We also learned as he went to his death that his body became very sick and ill. 
And I think at that time, for me, he was most powerful. He could barely speak, and he taught us how to die. He could barely speak, and he taught us to trust fully in God. You remember when he was first elected and went to the windows and he opened the doors? What's the first thing he said to the world? Do not be afraid. Almost like you can hear Jesus saying in today's gospel, peace be with you. I have one story of Pope John Paul II. He came to Denver in the early 1990s for World Youth Day. And a classmate of mine from college got involved in the planning of the mass. It was a huge outdoor mass. Well, the Pope got ready someplace else in a house, and my friend, my classmate, was in the house with the Pope and 200 other people getting him ready. Then he would be transported to the place where the Mass was. Well, my classmate was there kind of at a distance, kind of helping, and pretty soon in the room where she found herself, everybody else kind of went off to do a task, and she was alone in the room with Pope John Paul II. And as he was getting ready, he stopped and looked, and he noticed her, And then he began to walk towards her, and she thought, oh my goodness, the Holy Father is coming to me. And she got nervous and excited, and he leaned into her, and he went like this. And she thought, oh my goodness, he's going to say something. This is our Pope, what's he going to say to me? And he leaned in, and he said very clearly, where is the bathroom? (laughs) Our Popes are human, and I thought of that this week when Cardinal Wuerl from Washington, D.C. was interviewed. And somebody asked him, aren't you afraid that Pope John Paul II is becoming a pope too quickly? And the cardinal said, what do you mean by that? And the interviewer said, well, he died in 2005. That's eight years ago. So many people who knew him are still alive, and those people all know that he's not perfect. I mean, think about your friends and your loved ones. They have great gifts, but they're not perfect. So the interviewer said, aren't you afraid that those people are going to tell the world that your new saint is not perfect, so how can he be a saint? And Cardinal Wuerl smiled and said, I don't think you understand what we believe about saints. Saints are not perfect. Catholics, our goal is not to be perfect. Saints are holy, and I think they are saints because they allow those around them to grow in holiness. That's why someone said that saints are the ones that let the light through. Look at the stained glass windows. Saints are the ones that let the light of Christ come through and they shine on all of those around them. And I think that's where we hear in today's gospel Jesus coming to his disciples. They're locked in a room because they're afraid. First thing you notice, we have a God who can break through whatever is locked and fearful in us. And then when Jesus breaks through that, he says not once, but three times, peace be with you. And then he breathed on them. This is new creation. And then he gave them a mission. What is the mission that he told his disciples? Go out and forgive sins. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven. Whose sins you retain are retained. That's our mission. In the Bible, every time somebody has a significant encounter with the living God, immediately something follows. They get a mission. So as soon as people encounter God, go all the way back to Moses and Abraham, Isaiah, Ezekiel, as soon as they encountered God, they couldn't just smile and say, look at me, I'm holy, I met God. The very next thing is they know deeply inside, God is calling me, appointing me, and sending me on a mission. We call that vocation. Well, according to today's gospel, what is our main mission? Go out and forgive sins. We are to be bearers of divine mercy for the world. We are to be bearers of God's forgiveness. God cannot help himself from forgiving us. God seems to stumble over himself to give all the forgiveness and mercy that God can. And God is enlisting you and me to help in that. So I guess lastly, I would challenge you and invite you, are you doing that? Are you forgiving other people? Especially people who have hurt you. Ugh. Most of us say, give us a different mission. Tell me to paint the church. I can do that. Tell me to raise $2.5 million for our Catholic school. I can do that. Don't ask me to forgive somebody that's hurt me. According to the gospel today, that's our mission. And when you begin to live out that mission, you find out who you are and why God made you. Alleluia, alleluia.